Hello, my name is Professor David Dunaway and I'd like to tell you about Apert syndrome, which is one of the syndromic forms of craniosynostosis that we treat within the craniofacial unit. It's a condition that affects the way the skull and the face grow um, because the, and it is due to a genetic abnormality, due to a, uh, a small mutation in one particular gene, the fibroblast growth factor receptor gene. Uh, FGFR2. If you have a copy of this abnormal gene, it causes the bones of your skull and face to grow in an abnormal way, and the sutures that bind them together fuse together so that the skull can't grow properly and the face can't grow properly. Because the embryological processes that make up the face and the hand are very similar, this particular condition, Apert syndrome, also causes uh, problems with the hands where the bones of the hands become fused together. You have a syndactyly. So in the craniofacial unit we are very much involved in looking after children who have this condition and shortly after birth it can cause a number of problems because the skull doesn't grow quickly enough it means that there isn't enough room for the brain to grow so this can cause problems with pressure inside the head so these children can have raised intracranial pressure. The bones of the face don't go, grow quite normally either, and this has two effects quite commonly. One is that there isn't enough bone around the eyes, so that the eyes become exposed and are no longer protected. And because the cent bones of the central part of the face are growing, it can also be quite difficult for children to breathe. So managing children who have Apert syndrome is something that goes on throughout childhood. When they're first born, we're very keen to understand what their general health is like, and surgery may be necessary in order to make the skull bigger so that uh, there's room for the brain to grow. We may need to do operations to improve the airway or protect the eyes. Mostly in infancy, these operations are done for entirely functional reasons. When you have Apert syndrome, there are lots of other challenges involved because of all of the issues that may arise from not being able to breathe or speak properly or see properly. And so we have a very big multidisciplinary team that looks after all of these problems. You'll see speech therapists, psychologists, um, you'll see the orthodontists to see how the teeth grow, to make sure that the teeth grow in a, in a normal way. And generally children are seen every year and have a regular assessment to make sure that they're doing well. As children become older, sometimes the appearance of their face and their head is of concern to them and then we think about undertaking surgery to uh, treat the difference in their facial appearance. Most commonly, this will be uh, an operation that brings the central part of the face forward so that it compensates for the growth that hasn't happened. The most common way of doing this in people who are severely affected is by a, uh, an operation called uh, frontofacial distraction, in the case of Apert syndrome, bipartition distraction. And that involves an operation where we divide the bones of the face from the undersurface of the skull and then use a frame to gradually stretch them forward over um, a number of weeks. And in doing so, it makes the face look much more average in appearance. It increases the size of the airway so that children can breathe properly. It increases the size of the eye socket so that the eyes are properly protected. And it gives more room for the brain to function and grow. So it's effective in treating raised intracranial pressure. So all of these things are very complex. Uh, and in the past, it was always felt that Apert syndrome was a very difficult uh, condition to treat and that the outlook was not good. But I would have to say that as we've developed this multidisciplinary approach where we look at all of the problems of function and uh, skull form, that now our children with Apert syndrome are making great strides and uh, are taking up useful positions in society and are well supported. And it's something I think that we're very proud of uh, within the craniofacial unit to have uh, been able to produce a uh, a team approach that has allowed children to maximise their potential and lead good and useful lives even though they have a very challenging condition.